Well, hello. Long time no see. But right before anyone starts to mention anything, I know. I'm green. <laughs> That's no issue at all because my next hair color is actually going to be deep blue roots that fades into a nice turquoise. We're not here to talk about me. We're here to talk about my kitchen table. <laughs> I found it on Marketplace or something similar to that. And I bought like the whole set for like 50 bucks. It was like nothing. But I wanted a set that was 100% pure wood. At the time I was very into this kind of farmhouse style on kitchen furniture or furniture in general. And the style was the counter was like a darker brown stained wood that you would have maybe like a nice lacquer on top of. And and the rest of the furniture was like painted in uh, opaque white and maybe you could use some kind of antique wax to make it look old and at the time I really liked the result that I made and I also noticed that I, I actually sanded this uh, countertop down so I could add more of a matte lacquer on top of it but I realized that the lacquer that I used maybe I applied it wrong or something but it didn't really set if I only go over with my nail it would just scrape off that easily so it wasn't the best quality or this lacquer easily got so many scratches so now that I have have these soft boxes you can see all these horrible marks here then i looked through pinterest and i was looking at like pictures of kitchen tables that was painted with chalk paint and i came across this style that was like a modern take of farmhouse kitchen table which was more like the reverse look of the typical farmhouse style which means that the countertop here it was pretty much the natural wood finish of the wood that the table was made of and the legs and the parts underneath was in this nice clean matte black shock paint something I hadn't seen before all I knew was that all right let's see if I can find some black shock paint and I actually found this one this is the same brand that I used for my palette bed and this is graphite it was the darkest one they had so hopefully this is more closer to matte black the color will always look different when it's dry compared to when it's wet and then it also gets deeper finish when you add the finishing wax the plan here is to sand down the whole top part of the table so i get rid of the lacquer and stain here so i get the natural wood finish and then i think when i have sanded it down i am going to use a finishing wax to protect it i'm going to see if that's enough it's a furniture finishing wax so it's probably going to be no problem to use as a finish up for the top piece here if it won't work then maybe i have to put a lacquer on it in the future but for now i'm just going to try the finishing wax i have actually played around a bit with this countertop and to see if i can find a faster way to get rid of the lacquer and the stain so what i found was to use it is a knife but you can use it to scrape the surface so what i did is i used this one to scrape off as much of the lacquer as possible and thankfully the lacquer was so thin that it was actually like i said i could just go over with my nail and scrape off right away could i could even scrape on the surface to remove some stain so you can see the natural wood actually peek through I use like a wooden block with this one I have a straight surface when I'm sanding edges of the table to get a flat nice edge and I'm using this one with rougher grit sandpaper this is 80 grit sandpaper so they are rougher so they're perfect sandpaper to start with and then you go with finer and finer grit sandpaper to get a smooth and nice surface and this worked perfectly because i noticed that the edges pretty much got all the way down to the natural wooden grain so that's the plan when that's finished the the only thing left that is going to be the most easiest part is just to color in all of the white areas of this table with the black shock paint can't wait to see the finished result i think we should get started now so let's start sanding Ah. 
like that, Jan? Well, you're the one who wanted to use hand. Yeah, so, so, I know. So have you changed your mind? You're going to use the sander instead? Or? Just give me a couple of minutes. All right. We'll finish this one. Sure, you do you. much of a work to do this uh, maybe I would still have done it hopefully the sanding won't be as much of a hassle as this was my thumbs I hope they will survive tomorrow they are so swollen now like they have I was so close to get major blisters <laughs> I'm so happy I'm done now now I need to rest Right, so a quick update from progress from yesterday. I did a little work off camera using my sanding block here with 80 grit sandpaper. I tried it on this part. It made such a huge difference to get rid of all this lacquer. But if you look here close up, you can still see some of the dark brown stain in some of the grooves in the grain here. It looks pretty cool, so I'm not sure if I want to leave it like this. If I don't like the way it looks, then I will just sand it down uh, all the way till just natural wood. I really like the effect of having more of the natural feel of the wood, but with a protective finish on top of it using the finishing wax. This is what I'm going for. So I'm going to start sanding down the entire surface now. As you can see I have vacuumed the entire table so I got rid of all the dust from all the sanding. I don't know how many rounds of sanding I have to do with the 80 grit sandpaper and the reason why I think that it's a bit of a challenge to get down to all the natural wood is because I had a high gloss lacquer first after I had stained this table with dark brown. I know that I did make a thick layer of high gloss lacquer on this table. I think I there's still a thin layer of this hard lacquer left. I know it's possible for me to do this using the sanding block. I don't need to use the sander, but it's going to be a lot of elbow grease working with this table. I don't know how much I'm going to record of this process because it's mostly just me uh, repeating the same process, but I'm definitely going to record when I'm starting to get more of the natural wood grain to actually peek through. And then it's getting more interesting to actually see the process. So, but we're slowly getting there to the results that I'm looking for. So I seem to go against my plan from doing all of the hand sanding. I don't know, maybe I'm weak or something, but some areas like over here, it was no issue. I could just sand and all of the dark brown seeds would just disappear as soon as I went over with the sandpaper. But here it's like, I don't know how much I've been going over with these rough sandpapers and it's still dark brown, like here and some areas here also. And I'm gonna try to use a sander here. It's not recommended to do all of the sanding indoors, but I've already removed so much on this table, so I don't think it's going to be that much. But I feel like I need something with more power and strength to get rid of this last stubborn layers that is on this table. I'm going to go back and forth between the sander and regular sandpaper on a piece of sanding block. I'm going to definitely have to vacuum between each layer so it minimizes all of the amount of dust that might be on this table. So see you later when this is done. <laughs> So this is the result so far using a combination of the sander and Ada grit sandpaper on the sanding block here. I might go over these parts just by hand by the sanding block. Getting pretty late and I don't want to annoy my neighbors <laughs> with having the sander on. <laughs> 
I'm gonna try to remove as much as I can, at least on this part now. I've used the technique here using a plastic bag and I make sure that I do not cover too much of the actual sander. I think it's sort of a fan inside of it for the engine of this machine and if it's covered up with plastic all over it might increase the risk of the sander to get clogged with all the sanding dust so I will do more using the sander tomorrow since I can start much earlier tomorrow. The sander is going to quicken the process of getting rid of all of this dark brown dark working on the finer and finer grit sandpaper for the surface of the table to make it smooth and very nice. So that's pretty much all about the process now. I'm just gonna continue with the 80 grit sandpaper all the way until all of these dark spots are gone. Yeah, that's just an update for what's happening right now and my plan. And yeah, nothing more than just continue sanding until I get rid of all the dark brown. Alright, so today is a new day. Majority of this day I'm going to be home, hopefully. I know that I can start working with sanding the rest of the table, hopefully as much as I can with the sander, so I can finish this entire surface. I hope today. I don't know if I'm at a bit of a dilemma here or something, but like I said, I want the table to be natural wood, but I feel like the natural shade of this table, I don't know if it's going to change. Right now it feels like it's a bit spotty. Some areas look bright and other areas seems to be more like a yellowish toned natural wood shade. If that's the case, when I'm done sanding, then I'm going to use some kind of bleach that you can spray on top of the surface of the table. And if you leave it on for like 15 minutes, so you can see that the actual bleach will actually bleach the wood. And you can use that method as many times you would like on the wood until you get the shade you want on the wood. Then you just wipe off the bleach with a damp lint-free cloth. But yeah, I have to finish sanding first and then I can make my decision if I feel if it's necessary to apply bleach to this table. So I just wanted to show you the process so far and all I can say is a success! Well, it only took me like two weeks, but now I finally feel like I can actually imagine what the finished result is going to look like. So I'm gonna show you something here. If you look close up, it's very spotty because the majority of the stains are in very tiny pieces of the grain here. So I'm gonna try the technique of going with and against the grain back and forth and hopefully that's going to even up the surface and get rid of as much of this dark stain. And obviously I'm going to do the corner here off camera. It's the same technique that I did here. It's going to be ridiculously fast compared to the top of the table. I just wanted to take my time to actually appreciate how beautiful this table actually is. It feels like such a shame that I would paint it so dark with the dark brown stain and because it covered up all of these beautiful grain details on the actual wood. So I'm very happy that I was able to bring back all of those features on this table. I'm getting to a point where I'm actually starting to be very pleased with the finish of this table. I have gone over with finer sand and paper like 150 grit and 240 grit and I felt that using those grits actually when you smoothen the surface of the table it actually starts to remove some of the stain so I think it has to do with the fact that all of the surface details are getting more flat and that makes it easier for the sandpaper to actually remove the stain. Honestly I if I don't get rid of much more of the stain than what's already on the table. I actually don't really mind. I think that the table looks very beautiful as it is right now. I finally feel like we're getting somewhere and then we can finally start painting the rest of it and be done with the whole table. If I look very excited, it means that finally the sanding is done.
we can finally move on to the next step and that's to bleach the table. I know with these soft boxes lighting up the table here, it may look like this table is already so bright as it is, but I promise you as soon as I apply a little bit of water or maybe the grease from my own hands, the surface is yellow instantly. Meaning that if I go over this surface as it is now with a tiny bit of finishing wax, it's going to turn yellow. That means that I have to brighten up this table and want it to look this bright even with a finish on it. I'm going to try the technique of spraying some bleach on top of the surface. It's just a cleaner for your bathroom but it is basically like a bleach. And I have actually mixed in a little bit of water in a spray bottle. I'm gonna try to spray it as evenly as possible on top of the surface. And then I have a fan here so it makes the drying process much faster but also can make the fumes go outside like a ventilation, but it doesn't smell like that bad. It's a cleaner for your bathroom, so you can use it indoors, so it's not real bleach, if you know what I mean. I'm gonna see, I'm gonna let it set for, was it 10, 15 minutes? See what the surface looks like, if I think it's bright enough, and then you can just wipe it off with a damp lint-free cloth, and then we can add the finishing wax, and then we can add the shop paint, finally! Almost a three week process so far, should never underestimate a project. Even if I think it's going to take much faster, I have to expect it to take longer, but in the end, the result is always worth it. So this didn't really go as planned. I don't know if my eyes are confused or something, but maybe the bleach did something. Maybe it did lighten up the table, maybe just a tint brighter. I think it has to do with the fact that I wasn't really paying attention to the actual process of doing this bleach process. If I look back at footage, like videos about how to bleach wood, I remember a certain detail, which is that most of these people did it actually out in the sunlight. And I think it has to do with the fact that you need UV light. I didn't have that in mind when I did this and I actually applied the bleach when it was actually dark outside so I didn't have any sunlight to help with the bleaching process. The only reason why I wanted to bleach it was because I thought that maybe if the finish is going to deepen the surface of the table it might make it look more yellow because once I applied like a little bit of water it started to look very yellow. But I made a discovery today. I decided to, after I had cleaned the entire surface of the table, no chemicals or anything left on the table, I decided to, on all the corners and the edges of this table, I went over with the finishing wax that I have to see, all right, what will it actually look like? Because I know it has a drying time of like 15 minutes. I just went over with one lint-free cloth that had the finishing wax. And once I applied it all the way around the table, I went over with a clean, dry, lint-free cloth just to remove any excess wax. And then I let it sit for 10 to 15 minutes for this wax to dry. The finished color that the wax actually left behind when it was dry was like 1 or 2% darker than the actual wood itself. Meaning that all of this hassle to try and bleach the surface of the table and all that was actually a bit unnecessary. <laughs> the finishing wax doesn't actually deepen the wood as much as I thought it would. But I, I think it's good for you to see the trials and errors and when you are new to this kind of stuff. I mean, this is new to me and I don't know everything. And just to actually show you that I make mistakes and I don't know what to do for the next step and the other to get the result that I'm going for. And I have to try myself with one technique and the other to see that I actually finally get to the point where I am getting the result I'm looking for. And, and there you go. <laughs> Now we can just finish the top of this table for once with some finishing wax and then we can start painting the rest of it with shock paint and finally be done with this project and move on to the next one.
finally we're getting to the most exciting part about this table and that is to apply the shock paint and we're definitely going to see what this shade looks like now because I haven't opened this one so I don't know if it's like a matte black but definitely this dark shade in contrast with the table making sure that the rest of the table is close to black as possible the top of the table is going to look much brighter. So before I'm going to open this one, I need to do a couple of preparations of the table on the parts that are going to be colored in with the shot paint because I, I need it to be, you know, clean and that stuff. I don't want any dirt or grease or anything underneath the paint when I'm going to color over it. This is just a mixture I made with some cleaners for the table so I can get rid of as much of the dirt as possible. And also there was another part of the table was piece had broke off and I hadn't fixed that. So now I had to go over with a little bit of filler putty. This one. But I needed to use something so I can get a nice edge there. I, I just want to make sure that the underneath of the paint is going to be clean and nice when I apply the paint. So I'm gonna try and do as much of the uh, preparation work I can on those parts. Maybe go over with a little bit of sandpaper just to maybe even out the surface a little bit and also make it the surface not as glossy, give it more of a textured, rougher surface. So that's the plan for the rest of the table now going to see what this one looks like. Trying to carefully open it. All right, so, yeah, so it definitely is a very deep gray, like anthracite gray or something. That's no issue at all. I really like deep gray also. Maybe in the future I might see if I can find a shock paint that is more of a matte black, but this is definitely a good base to start with. If I find one that is more matte black in the future, then I can just paint over the surfaces that I already painted. So just gonna finish with the preparation work on the parts that are going to be painted, and then it's time for the shock paint, finally. This is one layer of the shock paint. Obviously I have just done a rough coat. Just make sure that the first layer is just going to be covering up the majority of the table so it has a base of the graphite. And yeah, you may see here that the bristles of the brush started to peel off some of the paint when I went back and forth. So it was better to just leave those areas alone and just went over to the next area so every part that is white is filled in with this graphite in a rough coat. And for the next step I'm gonna try to use just a regular sponge and then just stipple on the next layer. The next layer is not going to need as much paint as this one. It's just about redefining and just fine polishing stage of the paint. So yeah, see you when I have done the next coat. Feels like I'm having a bit of a battle with my own brain. At some points I feel like I don't like the finish and at other points I feel like it's growing on me. I know that I wanted a matte black finish because if you look at my lamp there, they are matte black. I wanted something similar to that, that kind of matte black. It's a very nice looking matte black. But obviously I also really like this gray tone because it matches the sort of the style that I have painted on my walls and also the brick wallpaper that I have. Maybe I'm gonna settle for this for now and if I feel that this is definitely not how I want it, then maybe in the future I'm gonna try to invest in a black black finishing wax because I know you can use it on top of graphite to give it more of a richer deeper tone. Yeah I'm definitely gonna have to take my time and think about this if I really want to do any changes or if I'm going to be happy with the result I have now. So I just had a little bit of a crazy idea, but I know that you can use leather dye to actually stain wood. 
and I thought maybe I should try this black antique stain that I have because it has a thicker consistency in it so it reminds me a little bit of a buffing wax. I did a method of applying the wax with a sponge and made sure that I really made an even application and rubbed it in as much as I could and then I went over with a lint-free cloth just to really buff the antique stain into the surface. Just want to show you. It made such a huge difference just adding the black. I mean look at that contrast from the top of the table to the legs and the rest of it. Just, just from a little bit of that stain and then just rubbing it in. It really made an even application when you applied it. Turns out that I actually had something at home that I could use to get more of this kind of matte black effect. This is what I wanted so I don't know how sensitive it is towards water and all of that so I'm just going to let it dry and then I'm going to add a finish on top of it. finished one month of hard work to get the result that i was looking for the only steps that i had to do was sand down the surface of the table and then just put a finish on it and then paint the rest of the table with shock paint put a finishing wax on it and then be done oh no this turns out to have much more in store for me than I was anticipating. I also said, and I stand by what I said, even though if I had known that it was going to be this much work, I would have still done it. I'm super happy with the finish as well. I just noticed as soon as I removed the bed sheet from the table, it all looked complete. Like I said, I really like the fact that it still has some of the stain left in some of these grain details because it looks more like black, so they matches the matte black that I have on the rest of the table. So in the end everything just worked out together beautifully. Maybe the process didn't go as planned but the actual outcome was what I was going for. <laughs> so you may be wondering why I haven't shown you the whole table with all of these chairs around me because they are definitely going to be another <laughs> project after this one. There were so many trials and errors in this project. I, I noticed that it, I don't know how many times I thought that, oh today we're going to finish the sanding or today we're going to finish the sand today or tomorrow and it turns out that it was going to take like two more weeks or something. But now I can finally move on to something else. So I really hope that you enjoyed watching me struggle through the process of this table, find it a bit amusing. <laughs> so that's pretty much it. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in your next project. <laughs>